Hello everybody. Thank you for joining me in this video. Today we're going to have kind of a twofer with uh, talking about, what's his name? Sadio, it's either Mane or Arman, I'm not sure, but I'm going to do my best to pronounce it correctly. But we're going to talk about him today in both a practical Christianity and a what you can do. <laughs> So I've seen this story floating around. It's actually older than this year. I think it's like a 2016 story, 2019 story, something like that, about Sadio. He's a Sengalese soccer star who earns approximately 10.2 million annually, it says. <clears throat> I found this story one other place, and then I found other stories about the things that he's done. So I think it is true. You have to kind of be careful with that on Facebook. <laughs> So, and that's mainly where I've seen this is Facebook. So people saw him carrying around a cracked iPhone, thought that was awful. You make all this money, why is your iPhone cracked, right? His response to that was, why would I want 10 Ferraris, 20 diamond watches, and two jet planes? I starved, I worked in the fields, I played barefoot, and I didn't go to school. Now I can help people. I prefer to build schools and give poor people food or clothing. I have built schools in a stadium, provide clothes and shoes and food for people in extreme poverty. In addition, I give 70 euros per month to all people from a very poor Sengalese region in order to contribute to their family economy. I do not need to display luxury cars, luxury homes, trips, and even planes. I prefer that my people receive some of what life has given me. So this is a perfect example where we talk about on the Christianity side where they sold things and gave according to those who had need. This guy's making $10 million. He goes, well, I can give some of this away. I can make things happen where people, where I know people are poor. I can do that. Instead of just keeping it all for myself and blowing it, what, what am I going to do with all that? Right? So that's a mindset, guys. It, money is not evil. If you love money and you want to keep it and it's all yours and mine, 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 and you're greedy, that's evil. But this guy's been given $10 million because of his soccer ability, because he made money for other people. He then takes that money and gives it to people who need it, provides things for people, provides, um, the biggest thing for me is he says he does schools. Um, school, when you have no school, Schools are a way in a very poor area to provide, um, oh, what's the word I'm thinking of? <laughs> it provides just all kinds of opportunities. There it is. To learn, to learn just who you are, what you like, where you can go, things like that. If you have a school, people have a central, a lot of times people in these poor areas will use that as a central place to gather for emergencies for all kinds of stuff the same way we use our schools a lot of the time <clears throat> excuse me uh sorry allergies again <laughs> so uh i look at this and i'm like okay so there is the example right there this is also something you can do i know i talk about a lot about money and talking to people but think about you know someone or you've heard of someone or you can go somewhere and give to something that helps somebody out do it like that will change the world and they'll listen to you most of the time all right you can then take that money that where you helped them and you did what was good for them and turn it into, hey, let's talk about your life. Hey, let's talk about Jesus. Hey, let's talk about what's going on in the world. Maybe I can change your mind. Okay. These things don't happen in a, in a bubble. They, they drop and they ripple out. So this is something you can do even on this, even on a small level. If you just know someone who maybe is hungry and you can buy them a sandwich, it makes a big difference to their life. And that the, you doing that helps you too, believe it or not, because now you have the mindset of, it's not just about me. <clears throat> Excuse me. 
a little drink there. It's not just about me. It's about others. There are other people out here who have it worse off than I do. You know, there are other people out here who have needs. There are other people out here who can't do this, that, or the other. So just, <clears throat> excuse me, think about that as you're going through the day. Christianity has the concept of you care. Caring for others is central to what you do. You can see this and, and wherever you are that way, God rewards you with more of the money and things like that to give away, not particularly to keep. Not so much for you, but so that you will give it away. So, and help people. So if you're going to be that conduit for him, their money's going to come to you. But just know that it is for something. It's not just for you to screw around with. So this is something I'm working on. This is a way that I've always thought is that if you have money, your family should benefit from that in some way. If it's just a party or you buy them a sandwich or, hey, let's go out to eat or, hey, can I just whatever you need a tire, you know, something like that. And that's, uh, that's just always the way I thought if my family member needs something, my immediate thing was, well, okay, I can go get a job and make money and get that for that person because right now they can't. Okay. What this does for the other person though, also, which I don't think is talked about a whole lot is that they have a need, a problem, whatever the world out here says, you know, well, there's not, nobody wants to help you. You're no one because you don't have money because you don't have looks because you don't have whatever it is, right? Whatever it is, the world is telling you, you need, you don't have it. And so nobody's going to help you. You're by yourself. You're alone. You're not going to be able to do X, Y, Z. Okay, so then you come along and you help this person. That radically changes how that person thinks about life and themselves and what is good and how to live their life, etc. Because now someone has, even though the world has told this other person, oh, hey, you don't have X, Y, Z, whatever it is, you have now come along, even with them knowing they don't have any of that, and said, hey, guess what? You're still worthy of help. You're still worthy of love and conversation. That's what God, you know, th that's why doing this is like being like God, because God says, even though you're a sinner and you know, et cetera, like that, I loved you anyway. I died for you. I went through torture for you because I love you and because I'm, I'm willing to correct. I'm willing to go through all that to help you correct the thing that you messed up, you know, in the garden, et cetera. So, <clears throat> I think we as Christians need to look at these things and go, wow, that's awesome. Christianity at work. That's a practical Christian concept being in play here. Okay. And I don't think he is Christian. I think he's actually Muslim. It doesn't say in this one. Okay. But if you think about it, that's practical Christianity. Christianity says, take your money and help others give to others. Um, while also maintaining your household, right? Don't, don't hurt yourself, but help others. And so, this guy, 10 point, whatever, 10.2 million, he could keep a million and he'll be fine. You keep two and he could, he would be fine. And he could just give away the other eight. I think he helped build a hospital also, things like this. You know, go out and do good in the world, guys. It changes not just you, but the other people around you. <clears throat> and in that way, the world. Okay, we change the world one person at a time. <clears throat> Sorry with one act of kindness at a time. God says, I made you. I love you. I built you for good works. Why? Because it changes the world into this peaceful place that he wants it to be. And that is another big rooted concept in Christianity. Okay. <clears throat> so I want you guys to just think about that. I have an envelope in which I label, give it away. And I put money in there. And then anytime, um, I'm directed to give someone money or someone asks for money, like anybody with a sign or whatever, right? Then I give that money away. Okay. That money, not having that money is not going to hurt my family. It's not going to hurt me. None of that stuff. It is designed it is there. Sorry. Specifically to give away. 
So just think about that, guys. How can you help someone else? What can you do in someone else's life, no matter how small, to make it better? And that's what you can do in this world. All right, guys. Thanks for joining me. Remember to pray and read your Bible. Let me know what you think down here. I know I rambled a bit. I was going to do some notes, but I decided against it because those started getting a little long. So anyway, I thought this was awesome. I think it's practical Christianity, so I'm going to put it in there, but I also think it's what you can do, so it's going to go in there as well. But uh, what do you think? I'd like to hear it. If you liked this video, please give it a like and share it out. And if you want to hear more, go ahead and subscribe. Until then, guys, remember, pray and read your Bible. That's the most important thing. And I will see you in the next one.